all the gear, no idea. I definitely think I'm not at that part. I've got some of the gear, and the gear I have, I'm quite okay with and know what I'm doing. I know about photography enough. But the only way you get to that point is by just going out and messing around. So, like, I'm relatively new to video, so that's why this isn't particularly good, you know. But I'm working on it, I'm trying to improve. Um, so, yeah, on the scale, I'm some of the gear, nearly all the idea. My execution sometimes is a bit poor, but always working on that, and I think the only way to work on that is to work on it. You know, don't give yourself excuses to not go out and video, not to go out and shoot. Just go give it a go. In terms of summer plans and COVID, um, new key and all the other bits and bobs we were going to, as with everyone else, is rolled over to the following year, so 2021. So a lot to come then. I wasn't prepared enough for that in terms of I didn't have many backup ideas. So going forwards, I'll write down two plans, a sort of at home and away shoots, as it were. And my next project, really, or thing to do is work on my Instagram channel and building that up a bit more as well as this. Go have a look at that if you like. Afternoon. So just watched a couple of minutes of a walk through New Addington Woods that I did a couple of days ago. And I looked at how long I've got there. There's not that much really is there. And it's not that interesting. It's a nice walk. It discusses where I think I am in terms of knowledge and camera. Not to say I'm the most knowledgeable, not to say I've got the best equipment, not to say I've got the worst equipment either, but somewhere in the middle of all of it. Um, so that's good. But I think in terms of making videos from here on out again, I'm going to go with eight videos in the week, edit together on Sunday, post out Monday and repeat that way till further notice. Um, blah, 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 blah. What's the general overall plan? Then? So, um, I'm really knuckling down with the idea of doing more water and surf photography, but as I mentioned in the video two or three back, shh, Sadly, my dive bag doesn't work anymore, so being in the water is the hard bit. So I'm looking at getting some Aquatech or Liquid Eye housing for it, and then I can share that experience with you, both in the water and... So we walked this way a few weeks, months ago, towards the start of lockdown, and most, if not all of this, was all cut down and looked a bit dead so it's nice to see that it's grown back a bit afternoon so as i think i've said already in this video and in the last one things are jumping around a bit because i've now back to work because Covid suddenly disappeared. But it hasn't, that's just what the government's sort of flipping back and forward between, but the government's the government. Your political opinion is your political opinion. Um, but yeah, as everyone's gone back to work, my time scale has changed again. So I'm fitting in video clips when and where I can, when there's something relevant to do or talk about, and I haven't had too much, not too much to do at work, because it's work, but either way. So clothes might change, what I'm doing might change a little bit and it looks like I'm jumping around because I am but that's how we're working. Um, so what have I done recently? Uh, me and Zoe again have been talking about project work per week, sort of working towards things to keep each other updated with what's going on per week in terms of our projects and our photo photographs, mm. words, English. Um, so that was nice to chat to her about, to go back, back and forth between that and I sold off my Sigma 35 lens and I know I only got that a while ago so that seems like an odd thing to do but through the winter I don't shoot as much and I shot a few portraits this time it's a lovely lens the 35 the Sigma 35 art Sigma 35 art lens is a lovely lens I shot one or two portraits and in terms of shooting the things that I enjoy shooting surfing and sports and things like that the Sigma 100-400 I use far more than the 35 and I don't have housing for the 7D yet. I don't have housing for the 7D yet so getting in the water and getting those nice close-ups of surface isn't really a thing with this camera so I made the decision to get rid of that which was a difficult one to do but it made sense and that allowed me to get some new kit in and there's a long process for this line of thought but I'll explain it through to you. So I invested in the Canon M50 so I wouldn't say an old camera, but it's been around a few, a year or a couple of years now, I think. At least, it must be at least two, because another photography friend of mine, Lydia, had this 
whilst I worked at CE. Um, it's 24 megapixels, 10 frames a second, a bit like the 7D, so there's a nice comparison there. Digi8 processor, which the first two things, um, megapixels and processor, are nice but don't really matter in the greater scheme of things. They're all just aspects of cameras these days. You know, it's quite unlikely to find a DSLR or mirrorless system that doesn't have that. It's got the same dual dual focus AF as this does, although I think the face detection is a bit better on the 7D than it is on this. Um, and, but not that it's relevant to me because I don't really shoot it and I don't have the processing power on my laptop to record in it and edit from it, but it has got 4K quite heavily cropped. Um, you want better in-depth details about it, there's loads of other YouTube videos that will go into the screen size, colour radius and all that sort of thing in terms of what the specs and spectrometers of this camera is. But why did I go for this? So on the little walks that I've been doing like round country parks and fields and then taking the 7D and the big lenses and things just to not have a specific goal but just to take photographs. It's quite hef hefty and like and cumbersome and gets in the way and it, the body for the 7D itself is a bit of a brick and quite heavy but I do like it for its specs and what it allows me to do and all the features and like having the um, settings on the Near the trigger is really helpful so you can just look down and take your photo. But having something that's wafer thin and literally weighs nothing at all is really well, is one of the key reasons I went it. It was a toss up between this and the Lumix G100, which are virtually in like there's a few obviously features that one has that the other one doesn't, and one thing does better than the other. But in terms of like on a shelf next to each other. In my, from my perspective of looking at things as like hammers and screwdrivers, they're the same thing. Um, so why Canon over Lumix? And it didn't really come down to the camera in the end, it came down to my overall goal and ways to work towards it. So I looked at housing for the 7D, I'll put this down, I looked at housing for the 7D and that's seven, eight hundred quid, which is worth it if that's what you do primarily and that's what I want to be doing primarily but I live in London and the seas all the way over here so it's not the most fundable decision or the best financial decision for me at the moment. Um, if I lived in one of my favourite places, Broadstairs or even better Cornwall and I was in the water every other day then I would have bought the housing over the things that I have bought because it just makes better sense and gets me to where I want to be quicker even if I never actually get to the goal it's just that's where it is. So getting back to the Canon I picked the Canon M50 because there's a housing from Mekion, Mekion they're a Chinese Hong Kong company, I don't know how to pronounce the word, I'm not very good. The nearest equivalent is like Sea Frogs, which is I think like their sister company in terms of naming, you know, same company, same product, just we're calling you this for this market and we're going to call you that for that market a bit how i think is it walmart walmart it's like walmart being owned by tesco's or something i don't know the exact logistics but it's something like that you don't call them the same thing in the same place they're not a they're a global company but not a global brand name um yeah, so the sea frogs have this housing for the m50 and i'm a good swimmer but i'm not the best and having the 7d and the 7d housing is quite a heavy mix which would make me a better swimmer eventually, but puts me at a higher risk from swimming. When I say it's a heavy housing, it's not that heavy, it's just the fact that you've got this brick of a camera and not something lighter, where the Sea Frogs housing looks lighter. I haven't actually felt them to compare the size and weight, but from just reading through the sort of setup of both would be that. So I bought this now, so I can video smaller. Uh, it's also got, hun it's got 100 and, 100 and, is either 100 FPS or 120 FPS. Can't remember exactly, it is in the manual and it will be on one of the menu settings. I believe this is slightly off, it's just rounded up to 125 sort of thing or either way, but it gives me a bit more slow-mo work, which is nice. But yeah, the goal is after the winter, and it's coming back around, depending on COVID and lockdown, the new normal in the next new year, 2021, um, I'm gonna aim to get the housing 
and I'll show you show you guys that as well at the same time. Aim to get the new housing, get in the sea with it, and shoot some video and photo. So the main aspect of what I've done that way around is it gets me to where I want to be in with some financial safety, with some um, finan it's the financially safe option. It's the quicker option and the safer option in the long run. If I do start shooting more in the sea and swimming more and I get much more comfortable, com comfortable, confident and feel safe in the water and it's all good, then I will look at re-getting the housing for this depending on what the markets and the world is doing at the time. But yeah, that's why I went for the M50. I would say in terms of ergon like ergonomics, holding and handling, I've got quite long fingers so the grip's a bit of an odd feeling. But again, it's doesn't weigh anything. I can put a hand strap on it and just sort of have it floating there and it's not going to get in the way of anything. Having a viewfinder that's not a viewfinder is quite an odd sensation. You know, you're used to be able to look through, you know, through the lens, the whole point of having the prism up here. And it's one of the reasons it's a lot lighter is the prism that's in there, this little mirror that's up there, DSLR, single lens reflex, with a mirror in the top. It's a bit of an odd thing to do, but I'll get used to that. You can always flick onto live view with the flip out screen, which is nice because at the moment I don't know I haven't got a monitor for this camera, so I have got no idea whether I'm like perpendicular, how much headspace I've got in this video. Where with this, I can just be recording that way round, see what I'm doing. I can see the audio levels, which on this, I might be quiet as a mouse, I might be as loud as a lion, I've got no idea. In the week, I'll take some photos on the M50, maybe a few little video clips, and we'll, we'll compare. Well, not compare, because I don't think, on terms of where they are on the lineup of each system. It's got some similar features, but I don't know whether it's entirely comparable or not, but we'll see, we'll see.